Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here to share with you five studio habits that took my productions to the next level. Now, these habits might not be that obvious, and this is why I've decided to share them with you in this video. Hopefully, you could take something from this and learn from what I've gone through. Habit number one, keeping my studio tidy, very tidy. Now, I'm going to be honest. I am not a neat person by nature. As a matter of fact, when I started out, my studio used to be a disaster. Cables all over the place, hard drives all over the place, broken mic cables left in the boxes with my non-broken mic cables. I'd buy outboard gear that I never ended up using. My studio was just very, very, very cluttered. Now, what ended up happening is throughout the years, as I became more and more busy as an engineer, I was forced to become neat in my studio. In other words, I couldn't afford to shoot out mic cables while the band was sitting there anymore. I didn't have time to mess around patching in gear that really didn't make much of a difference anyway. So throughout the years, what I ended up doing was selling everything I wasn't really using, really getting organized with all of my cable management, making sure I had a fully stocked fridge with water for the bands, keeping menus on hand from when we needed to order takeout, just overall really running a tight ship. And the reason why this ended up taking my productions to the next level, it just created a much more relaxed and creative atmosphere for the artists that I was working with. And I've grown to love a tidy studio. As a matter of fact, whenever I have to work out of someone's home studio or even a professional studio that's not OCD organized, it drives me crazy. I'm just so used to having everything super organized, all of my cables organized by length and in their proper place, and just being able to have all of my tools on hand, ready to go without any time wasted. So if you're the type of person like I am where you're just not neat by nature, learn to keep your creative space organized. Trust me, it will pay off. And this leads us to habit number two, taking the time to get tones that are good at the source. Now we should all know by now that there is no such thing as fix it in the mix, especially when it comes to guitar tones and drum tones. Well, like many other people, I used to rush through recording, eagerly anticipating getting to the mix and tweaking things. And more often than not, I'd end up chasing my tail, putting out productions that were just subpar. It wasn't until I worked alongside professionals and saw just how much time they took dialing in tones at the source. Yes, this does take extra time up front, especially if you're working with an artist and they're sitting around waiting for you to get the right mic placement on an amp or on a drum set. But believe me, when you get great tones at the source, the rest of your production will come together with ease, especially the mix. So remember this, never rush through the recording process. Always get the tones right on recording day. Habit number three, editing on the spot. Now, of all the things that home studio owners gloss over, I'd have to say editing is probably top on the list. The reason is editing sucks. It's not fun. It doesn't feel like a creative task. And what ends up happening more often than not is if we don't edit on recording day, we just don't end up editing at all. And I have news for you. All professional engineers edit their tracks, especially in the modern day. So what I would end up doing was I would end up recording my tracks, not editing them on the spot, and I would just get right to mixing after tracking would wrap up and just never be happy with my results. Eventually what I started doing was just editing right there on recording day. So for example, if I was recording a guitar player and he was a little behind or a little ahead throughout the performance, I would just splice it right there and get it done with, get it out of the way. So when recording is done, I can get right to mixing and my tracks are nice, pocketed and in place. So if you're someone that doesn't spend a lot of time editing, I would say really get your editing chops down. It's a skill set that's pretty much a must in modern day recording. Now I know on the internet, people like to talk editing, saying that it's ruining music. But I mean, come on, we're living in the real world, especially if you're working with paying clients. Those tracks have to sound professional. And the only way you're going to be able to produce professional sounding mixes if you have nice, solid, tight performances. And like I was saying, if you just edit on the spot, get it out of the way, you'll be less likely to skip over it when it comes time to mix your tracks. And believe me when I say it made a world of difference in my productions and I'll never go back to being lazy ever again. Habit number four always using a click track. I'm so serious about this now that if a band contacts me and says they don't want to use a click track, I just won't work with the band. Now, I work in the hard rock and metal genres, and for the most part, these artists want really crisp, tight sounding productions. And unless the band is super duper rehearsed, and I mean very rehearsed, you're going to have to use a click track. Now, when I started out, I used to record a lot of projects without using a click track. And when I listen back to them, they really don't sound that great. Now, I'm not talking about the Grateful Dead. I'm talking about super duper heavy technical death metal bands. Now, not only will click tracks help you produce super tight productions, they'll make mixing a lot easier. 
your delays will automatically be in time with the song. If you want to fly in certain sections from other parts of the song, they're all in time. There's a solid reference. And overall, it will just make your life a million times easier. And the band, even if they don't think so, will be a million times happier. Now, if you're like me and you produce heavy music, use a click track. Like I said, unless you're working with a band that's super duper duper tight, you're going to want to use a click. Trust me. And this brings me to habit number five, knowing when to say no to a project. Now, like many other up and coming engineers, I used to say yes to everything. Bands that weren't rehearsed or prepared, hip hop artists that didn't have lyrics, folk singers that could barely play their guitars. I would say yes to everything regardless of the style of music or the experience level. And I ended up wasting a ton of time. Now remember, time is one resource we can never get back. And by nature, I'm a yes man. I like to say yes to everyone, but it has bitten me in the ass way too many times. And what I've learned through years is when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. If I say yes to a hip hop artist that doesn't come in with lyrics, I'm saying no to a great heavy band that I really want to work with. And since I've started saying no and really focusing on the artists that I really want to work with, I enjoy my job a million times more. And it was after I started taking this approach where my business really started to grow. Mainly due to the fact that I was consistently putting out good work because I was working with good artists and artists that I really wanted to work with. And not only am I way happier because I'm working with artists that I really enjoy working with, but I actually kind of have a life again, which is good. So I know these five habits may not have been obvious and are not of a technical nature per se, but believe me, they changed my life. And I couldn't imagine going back to having a messy studio, rushing through recording and trying to fix it in the mix, and not editing on the spot, which leads to not editing at all, not using a click track, and working with hip hop artists that come to the studio without lyrics. No, thank you. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to click the little bell icon in order to be notified every time I upload one of our weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And do not forget to download my five-step guide to better heavy mixes. Information that'll help you achieve better mixes with the gear that you already have. There is a link below in this video's description. Till next time, happy recording.